Hey yo, what is up guys, it's your boy Twitter here, you know the deal, new patch notes and we're gonna just dissect everything that's on there. One of my baby girls, Lice, is gonna get buffed and I wonder whether Aselica is gonna be absolutely broken. Let's get into it. So first, let's get a check in. Starting off with the Aselica and Elias buffs, let's get the read on this thing and as you guys can see, if not, there's a big wall of text coming from Aselica. Let's dissect this. So as I stated and actually said before, we're gonna get a s1 increase that usually had the s1 light or dark that gave you 350 attack speed for no reason uh stun for five seconds after use bloody bloody blah, blah, blah okay and a damage increase by 25 percent okay i don't think this is massive but it is interesting to have a pvp because the more auto attacks that you do the more blindness that you give to other characters that stuff is crazy then we got Blessing of the Sun uh, S2, increasing attack by existing value 8%. What? So, increasing attack by existing value plus 8% of Vasilika's physical defense and de uh, non hero damage by. You give this to somebody else, and you can give this to two people. Now, it, the, the, the fact that you can give this to two people, non hero damage by 20%. Uh, for PvE? Yo, this is crazy, my guys. And obviously there are people who run like, what, 800k physical defense? So you can get 80k by j just popping the S2. But that stuff is neat. I like this. Actually, S3, HP recovery effect will also include a silica. The existing value will show differently. I'm not quite sure what this is. It takes position and focuses to heal HP nearby allies eight times the total of existing value. Plus 12% of physical deep. Wow. In terms of PvP, it doesn't sound as broken, but if you put recovery on other people, this could be a very much healing character for no reason. And obviously, you will just run this physical defense. The only downside is if you run into then a rebel clause, you will still die. However, it still sounds kind of broken and increases the uh, physical defense for 10 seconds. Uh, what do they usually say? Oh, five seconds, get up, creep for 10 seconds enemies within a range take magical damage blah 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 magical defense reduction nothing much has changed to that hp allies healed with two percent of silica's max hp so you have a tank that can heal up your bruises that sounds pretty pretty good she's like a female shock man as magnus is saying Last buffs are already too much. Only uh, lacking some PVE only buffs. I do think we're gonna get into lies a little bit later, but overall, this is already quite broken. As for a silica, let's look at this some more. So the S4 Curse of the Sun. Okay, part of the skill of the light will become added into it. Okay, so we get a change in the T4. The enemy stacks curses, blah, 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 blah. Okay, attack reduction by 30%, which was usually on the live version for 10 seconds. Upon using the skill grants blessing of the angels to allies, excluding self for five seconds. Now this seems new. Blessing of the angels reduces physical damage granted allies take by 15% and reduces uh, and, well, what? and heals their HP by 0.1% of the Celica's max HP every second. But what? And this could simply be stacking. So popping a UT4 and keep stacking this. This seems to be like a pretty decent overall healing buff. In that sense, she could be a healing tank while doing auto attacks, which will grant herself auto attacks by popping the S1. Interesting. I like that. For the PvP and the sides, it, it looks quite crazy. In terms of survivability for newer players, maybe a Silica might be really good for starters too. As the S1 increases magical damage, the target take by 25%. Okay, so on top of the non-hero damage, you get 25% damage increase by just popping the S1. Interesting. As the S3 up and use dispels negative effects from self. So you will be always able to pop the S3 and heal up your other characters and give yourself buffs and what. Okay, then we got Curse of the Sun. Uh, Blessing of the Angel will becomes irremovable. So in terms of having a bruiser character that really busts up any type of bruiser physical meta, she sounds quite crazy. I'm not sure about you. The unique weapon, the magic damage boost effect is irremovable. 
up to 50% magical damage, stunned for 0.5 seconds, beautiful. With more attack speed, like I've been saying, I think a Celica will be a very good killer in terms of physical teams, wow. Then for her soul weapon, range in which positive effects will apply is expanded to self to allies okay and some effects from the previous advancement too will be up oh my god we're gonna get it a two new skill all attacks will increase in physical defense by 30 percent okay can be stacked up to 20 times of what so that is the a2 one because it used to be 10 times wow this is gonna be great for my eclipse too i love me some hp thanks so i'm building her for sure she seems quite potent if you want to build another counter to physical teams that make absolutely no sense then advancement one so this is part of the advancement phase two wow increases the duration by five seconds and additionally reduces two percent magical defense per stack of what the hell do i have her a1 I think I do have her A1, that's quite broken. Now for the A2, changes the magic damage boost to 3% coming from a 2%? No, yep. And reduces physical damage the allies take by 60% for the duration of the skill. Now, popping her soul weapon was the X amount of skills that you use. It's about six skills that you use, but ensuring yourself that you can do S1, S2, S3, S1 like two times or S1, S2, depending on if you get yourself the cooldown reduction, you can pop yourself the soul weapon and 60% physical damage reduction on top of the blindness that you will apply to other characters. Obviously, it's hard to proc, but if you do make yourself a longer fight, which is very likely a bruiser fight, then I do think this is interesting. As Magnus is saying, she could actually pair really well with Sonya. I am not sure about that, but it does sound interesting. Whew! Okay, let's hope for Lias buff on an equal amount. It says, the S1 bloody bloody blah, we get extra part, heals HP of all allies and increases heal rate by 25% for 10 seconds. This, my ladies and gentlemen, is pretty godlike for Eclipse. Because more heal rate means more survivability, means longer waves, and that stuff in itself is quite, quite crazy. Now, let's check the other one. Bubble shield. For 15 seconds, the ally take 30% reduced damage from non-hero non targets and out. I, w I was hoping for a second that it was all thing. <laughs> and increases damage to non-hero enemies by... Okay. And this one has about 100% uptime too. So you get 15% non-hero damage for free. Quite good. The damage reduction effect from... And the magic damage boost to none are irremovable. Okay, but the shield is not. So what? Okay, so you do get buff, but the shield is irremovable, killable, uh, such and such. So, even if the shield wears down, you probably can still use it. Okay. As for the S3, the dark version, oh, I like this. So, you get 3 seconds upon casting HP heals of all allies by... Okay, so the S3 will always heal. Not depending on the amount of uh, skills that you put into it. And recovers 2 ores, blah, 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 blah. Creates a whirlpool every 4 seconds. Wait. At least she won't save you from Lucikia. Well, uh, we're not done reading yet. The dark version on the S4. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. So, uh, the magic damage reduction effect from the previous S1 will be applied to the skill. It increases light CC resistance by 500. Bing! Okay, so normally the dark version gives you what? Uh, 400, and now it gives you 500. That's beautiful. And increase the ally's magical defense by existing value of 5% of Lias's magical defense. Okay, now, let me think about this for a second. Is that her magical defense on her current state or the start of the battle? Because she gives herself and other people more magical defense by her unique weapon and the X amount of attack. Now, if that gets added by more magical defense from the get-go, anyway, that sounds pretty, pretty good. Because, yeah, as Linkus is saying, I wonder since Lias is 4, now also uh, increases magical defense based on her own magical defense. Because for one, yeah, UT4. For two, you get more magical defense in terms of your unique weapon. So, and drop that into account that Loman gives more magical defense to her as well. And does that take into, into account? Whew, a lot of things to talk about. And whenever Elias casts an active skill, reduces magical damage all allies take by five. Wow. 
Okay, that's pretty broken. Will it then uh, make sure that you don't get killed by immediate bursts? Maybe. For one, you don't get stunned, which is beautiful. Uh, because of the CC resistance. And it's easier to build into a thousand, though. But then the Transcendence Perk, the S3, a dark version, changes the target of the world pull to the enemy with the highest attack. This is really situational, and I'm not quite sure whether I like this, but the fact that we don't have to get ourselves another heal, that is pretty good, and you can get the... But, as you guys are mentioning, it's still a problem. But, I would rather them ban Lucikiel and make sure that Lias and, uh, is fighting both a... What's it called? Shamila and Yuria, because looking at this, she will give more magical defense, have more healing rate increase, which is pretty good against uh, ranging types with the S1. There's only a few dispels coming out of that, and uh, for what I read, the S4, the damage reduction effect becomes irremovable. So the moment you pop an active skill, in contrast to whatever, you could literally get 25% less damage. So in all aspects, I like this because you can get yourself an undispellable 25% magic damage reduction. You get a CC resistance right off the bat. So any sense it is really good. And then we have ourselves a soul weapon. This spells what? This spells negative effects from self and allies. And some is a flowing circle of El Atuar for 12 seconds. Yo, that is beautiful. I would, I would say it's pretty strong because at the end of the day, when you get more healing rate, you get yourself CC resistance out of nowhere, even though there are a lot of characters that can still pull you and mess you up. But if you want to save yourself, you then have the options to pop the soul weapon, give everybody way more magical block for no reason, and she will be invincible to any type of magical damage that people will pop. So the fact that a lot of people are having heal rate reduction get negated by this. I like that and this automatically makes me feel like the UT4 is absolutely broken. I wish they did something to the UT1 but overall this seems like a pretty decent buff but not to make her ultimately super broken. But we'll have to see about that which will be shown tomorrow while I do League of Honor with my guy Linkus on the stream so let me check that one out later. As for more swimsuit, gold bonus 3% great. So for those of you whales that really didn't have enough gold yet, this is your time to shine. Uh, buy all of them. Oh my god. Fixed an issue where the shield guards did not reduce when the effect on spirit morph ring was applied. This is good and bad at the same time. Because for one, you can literally open up and murder every shield that is possible. Even if Spirit Morph Ring is applied. Now, while that is great, it can still lower the shield's defense. You can still blow it up. That is beautiful for PvP. But it is so ash for Eclipse because I use this gimmick to get 25% more damage. I'm, oh my lord. I will probably have to reforge everything on my Selene again. But that being said, that's quite crazy because I think it is a, a very high necessity for all these nasty characters on that Spirit Morph Ring. I do like this. I do like this a lot. Fix an issue where Little Raiders did not go into sleep after feeding them. Yeah, greedy bastards. We got event details and all in Korean, which I cannot read. Nice. This is what we all wanted to see. We get a treasure hunter castle for no reason. We get a UT. We get a skill. We get, okay, protections of the God King, which you can never have enough of. UT, okay. So that being said, you can get yourself reforged tickets. That's pretty decent. Event artifact pieces, some protections of the God King, and a treasure hunter capsule that artifact. So overall, the new event looks quite decent. But then, it seems like we got some farmable as well. One of them is the Brilliant Ether, Dr Dazzling Ether, Legendary Fragments, and unfortunately, those are still unique weapons. I hope it was artifacts at some point, but it isn't. That being said, we get a free Grimory costume with uh, hopefully some gold bonus. Uh, we got some more freebies coming with the amount of days that you play. 
for one day you get an extra slap which is nice and some protections of the god king along the way i do enjoy that Funny enough, and this is what I'd like to address, and I do think they are right about this. Lies will excel at protecting your team from magical damage and become viable in various contents, such as Trial of Flow. And that, with the newest patch, is definitely true because all of our effects will become undispellable. Absolutely crazy character. Would I then recommend it for everybody to build her straight away? I... Ugh, not yet. A Celica, however, especially if you are on the PvE side, with the protection of whatever oh a uh, trial of earth will become quite crazy for magical teams but maybe even physical teams although we have ourselves claws so that being said the fact that you can heal yourself up with a character that is a tank plus having yourself a claws in a team like that i think we have about one of the most optimal teams in combination with Taylor and the damage dealer for trial of earth for the newbies too so i do think that with her current upgrade she is going to be marvelous my guys that being said depending on which things you do you get yourself a wet five star dark legion gear ticket for options okay uh you can get a celica for free you can get a unique weapon uh and a what? Why did I make the soul stone two days ago? Mother! Mm! I don't like this! But you get a lot of unique treasures for free, so hey, uh, what the hell am I talking about? Is this, a, is this for free? Oh my lordy lord. Ugh, I wish... I I wish I knew this happened. Either way, Hero Academy is cool. We got ourselves a event artifact ticket. I think they are really generous. I think they are really generous upon this stuff, man. I do enjoy the fact that you can get event artifact tickets by a lot of means. Because I thought them to be very much behind a pay to win wall and you can either divert yourself from like PvE to PvP and back and forth depending on what you really want to do. But these things are welcomed by, I think, about everybody. So that basically concludes this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this buff. And I am looking forward to see all you Aselica and Lias players into PvP. And I'm going to piece this one out. Make sure to like and sub if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys into the next one.